In this latest installment of my Rain Barrel project series, we'll cover the construction, installation, and testing of our Rain Barrel pumping station. Stick around. Here's our pump. Just got a standard plug. Of course, when you plug this in, it's always on, so we're going to put this through the switch. So to wire this in, we're actually going to take the existing cord, run it up into the switch box, put the switch in line here, and then run this back out the bottom so it can plug into an outlet. Now, adding this conduit to the system probably isn't necessary. I'm not an electrician, but I had the scrap and it seemed like a good idea. Keep things tidy. Now, there's a lot of sharp burrs on this pipe and you don't want to leave that there because that could potentially cut into your wiring and actually short out <clears throat> the wires inside if it gets all the way through the insulation. So, I've got to file that stuff down. Nice edges, ready for some wiring. And this nut comes off, and that just feeds right into our box. And since this box is threaded, we actually don't need the nut. There's no way to put it on anyway. And that's fine. Let's tighten that down too. And since we're not going to use these other ports, it comes with couple plugs to put in there. This is where we're going to cut it, put our switch in. Now, as I mentioned before, I am not an electrician, so if there's something here I could do better, please let me know in the comments. If you're not familiar with or comfortable with working with uh, electrical wiring, then consult a qualified professional and do this at your own risk. I needed a little extra copper wire to properly ground everything, so I opened up a piece of Romex here and just pulled out this uh, extra piece of ground wire and attached it to the box. We got the two neutral wires connected on white here. The ground wires are connected in the green, and those are tied into the ground on the switch and the box. And then our hot wires that we cut apart on the original cord are now switched. So on, off. Now we can just mount this in the box. And we're good to go. For the enclosure, I'll be building it entirely out of uh, rough cedar boards, mainly to match the rough cedar on the exterior of the house. Here I'm cutting out just a basic sloped roof for the whole unit. And some holes to allow access to the hose connections. To get the on-off switch flush with the front of the pumping station, I'm uh, just lifting it up here and measuring uh, how big of a spacer block I'll need to put in later. So first we'll mount the pump in place. And here are the spacer blocks I mentioned earlier that'll hold our switch box in the right position. Just glued them and tacked them into place with some nails. Laid out mounting holes for the switch box. And 
put our last spacer block in place. Again, glue and nails. And one more screw to hold everything in place. I've laid out all the screw locations that I'll need on the outside to hold everything together. Here I'm drilling and countersinking each one. And more pre-drilling. And finally putting it all together with the exterior grade screws. After taking measurements of the switch box's location, here I'm laying out the cutout for the switch box on the front. And then just drilling out the corners and cutting it out with the jigsaw. The connector on this conduit actually sticks out a little bit too far, so we'll just have to clear some of that out with the chisel. And now we've got a good fit. And now that we know the front face fits, we can cut the top to match the slope of the roof. Again, more pre-drilling, countersinking, and assembly with screws. Next, for the access door, I chiseled out a couple pockets for the hinges so that the door would actually sit flush against the housing. Pre-drilled the holes for each hinge and screwed them into place. And to get the alignment right, I actually used epoxy, a little trick I learned from Jimmy DeResta, to hold the hinges in place in the right location. And we'll just let that epoxy set up for a while. And now those hinges are in the perfect location and all I have to do now is drill the remaining holes and screw them into place. To finish off the electrical work, I installed this water-resistant exterior switch plate. And to top it all off, we have a basic roof, and I just cut the, the back edge to match the angle so it would fit flush.
I got it all hooked up and we were getting a really weak stream out of this and I thought something was wrong with my pump, but check this out. Always check your hose for bugs. That's some sort of beetle that got lodged in the nozzle. <laughs> Let's get it out. That was in here. I think it'll work better now. Well, after working out a couple of literal bugs in the system, I think this actually works pretty well. Now we can water the garden without having to drag out 100 feet of hose from the other end of the house every day. So this is going to work out great, and we're doing it all with rainwater, which I think is pretty cool. And uh, this setup came together pretty nice. You know, we'll probably give it a coat of paint just to match the outside of the house. For the time being, I've just got an extension cord run out here, um, so eventually I'll probably put a, an outlet on the outside of the house, but that's a project for another day. But at least uh, we can run an extension cord out here, get power to the pump, water the garden, save ourselves the hassle of dragging out the hose every time. Granted, this was a lot of work to put together, um, spanning multiple months, but um, you know, if you like building stuff, this is definitely a good project for that. You have to decide if it's worth the, the effort and the expense, but uh, for us, I think this is going to be really nice. So if you have any comments or questions, feel free to leave them below. If you like this project, subscribe for more like this, and uh, thanks for watching.